by implication a token or another omen. So every time God does something in your life, that is going to be a signal for you to get more faith or an omen or a token to witness to you, to tell you, hey, this is me. Ain't no way in the world Pharaoh thought that was Moses doing all that. When you have flies coming in and frogs jumping around, then the angel of death come through there and kill all the firstborn. Did y'all think that was Moses? <laughs> no, then the water turned into blood and all that. I mean, they got TV shows now saying all these other kind of things. We got this place on the earth where, where it rains red, and they said that's what happened. I didn't even know this place existed on the earth. But there's a place where it rains and the water turns red and everything around it is red. They even show me, I, like, I watch a lot of history channels. I like being educated. But I, it shows me that the world is starting to come into these things and how Satan is changing it to his way. Amen. Mm. But if you don't know the word of God, you just begin to believe that stuff. You know, I say be strong before you watch it. Because all it will do is make you intellectual and then you'll come back and question God. See, I don't watch this stuff to question God. I watch this stuff to witness against them for God. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. But yeah, I'm going to tell you, don't believe none of that crap. Man's intellectuality will always drive you astray. Amen. But let's look at some people who will drive you astray. You ready? Uh, let's go back to um, John 4. Go back to John 4 again. Because in verse... 24 of that Deuteronomy, it says that I will live it, right? And this is what Jesus is telling them because they match up in the scripture. Watch what I'm trying to tell you. Remember John 4 and 50. John 4 and 50 mm -hmm. says, and what did Jesus say to him? Jesus said to him, go, thy way, thy son liveth. Now if you saw, that was also commanded back then. Thou will live it. That was one of God's signs and wonders. You're going to continue to live. So Jesus will let them know, thy son is going to live. Because he knew that man believed the Old Testament. See, his faith was back in that Old Testament wrapped in the law. <laughs> Read your faith wrapped up in that. Amen. So now Jesus was telling him, unless you believe the signs and wonders to get more faith, you're not going to believe what I can do. We're going home. But he began to see it when he walked home. And at the same hour, Jesus told him that his son began to get Amen? Amen? That was his measure of faith, to get more faith. But let's look at that. Um, because here, thy son liveth, so himself believed and his whole household, right? He had believed before this, first, very imperfectly. So he was believing imperfectly because he was taught the law, right? Then with a short confidence of Christ's word. So he started believing what Jesus was saying because he saw so many miracles that Jesus was doing throughout the, throughout the land, right? Then, but now with a faith crowned by sight. So now he goes home and sees the evidence of what Jesus said to the world. So now I can see the miracle. How many of you got miracles that people can see on you? I know that's true because every time I go somewhere and tell people how I was strung out to crack, how I was strung out in a homeless institution, how I was strung out in a mentally ill hospital, how I was living on the street, and they look at me and say, that's a lie. How could you be an instructor for the United States Air Force? How could you uh, be in, in, in computers and technology? Well, that's a sign and a signal for them to what? Get more faith, because they saw it in my life. Because they don't see me as a crackhead anymore. But there was a time I looked exactly like what I said. Why? Because I was living it. It was evidence in my life. But now me saying it, they're like, what? It becomes a mirror. Don't you want to be a walking sign and wonder for Jesus? Don't you want to be a signal to others to get more faith? Yeah. That when they see you get healed from your situation, they can get more faith and believe themselves that God can do it. Just like this man said, now his whole household got saved because he saw a member of the household that once was full of junk. Now they see him walking full of God's glory. Your household will be saved. Because they know it. There's nobody but Jesus that did that for you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. I hope y'all see where I'm going. Yeah. Amen. Keep going, preach. Now, watch the devil. Watch the devil. Now this is the most important part. Because we'll get so full and so happy of God's glory, the enemy will come along to deceive you. Mm -hmm. Go to Matthew 24. The enemy will come along to deceive you with signs and wonders too. All right. He's called the Antichrist. What does Antichrist mean? He does everything contrary to the word of God. He copycats Jesus. Right. Antichrist. Everything opposite. Of Christ. Amen? Amen? So Matthew 24, 
And this is actually an ex uh, eschatology verse because it talks about Jesus' return and the signs that will come before, before he returns. Amen? Nobody knows the date. So if you hear preachers talk about your arrival on such and such a date, y'all need to just stop and just say that's a lie. Only people who don't read their Bible <laughs> believe that crap. Okay? Nobody knows the date and time. Matthew 24, start at verse 23. And it says, then if any man shall say unto you, look, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. See that? Mm -hmm. Hey, think on Jesus. Don't believe it. I'm Jesus. Don't believe it. We got this guy on the internet I found out yesterday, I'm in the Spanish, uh, down in Florida, and he's calling himself Jesus Christ. And he got thousands and thousands of members following him. And he sat right there and said, I'm Jesus Christ. Now, how can these people, thousands of people down in Florida, follow this man who says he's Jesus? And guess where he been? The prison. Just got out of prison, pimping and everything else. He come out, become a preacher, and told these Spanish folk, the Latinos down there, that he's Jesus, and they believe him. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, that's people looking for false hope. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs mm -hmm. and false prophets, mm -hmm. and shall show signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect mm -hmm. that very elect here the King James me if it were possible they will deceive the very same you who call yourself saved they will deceive you through their signs and wonders that's why you gotta know your word man mm -hmm. know who's real and who isn't and the only way you want to know that is by reading your word having a prayer life see the problem is I need to say prayer life. God is changing my mind right now. I need to say prayer life because most folks don't have a prayer life. It's very important that you have a prayer life. You cannot stand up here and give a word of God or instruct somebody on the word of God and don't have a prayer life. You've got to get up prayer life. I don't know how many times I've got to keep saying it, Lord. Huh? Prayer life. I don't care if it's just waking up in the morning and saying, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Then when you go to bed at night, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, because everybody's so intimidated to talk to their father. Why are you so intimidated to talk to God? Believe me, I understand because I used to be that way too when I first got born again. But then I found out it is so easy to talk to God. That's only your own pride that's keeping you intimidated from talking to your father. You're not worried about what you did last night. He said, come clean before me. Come clean, baby. I know you're a mess. I need you to hear that you're a mess. Then I can bless you by being honest with me. Get out of the mouth and say, Daddy, I need help. I need help. Talk to God. But you can't give a word of faith, a word of knowledge, a word of anything, and do not talk to God. How can you instruct anybody with anything and you haven't talked to the Father? You know, you just full of knowledge, you're pumped up. Watch it. No more. Can you write a message to not that talk to God? Man. You know, it just isn't because God will switch that up on you like a whoo. Like I said, I'm preaching a message to you that was written seven years, six years ago. And just the other day, he finally added more to it because he knew it was going to be for this time, at this hour, at this day. Amen. And me having a relationship with God, I began to learn that. Every time I wrote something, I thought I had to preach it that day, that weekend. I mean, no. No. I need it for it to work in your life before you give it to anybody else. Amen. 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 So just because I got the knowledge of it, mm -hmm. I wasn't living it. Okay. I didn't get the revelation of it. I had the knowledge. But I had no wisdom. Mm -hmm. I had no faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I had no relationship with God. They would up, stand up here and give you this kind of message. Amen. But I had the knowledge. I had plenty of it. I had plenty of it. Amen. But you cannot do that without getting a prayer life. Let's continue to read again. Start back at... Uh, uh, verse 24 here. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible that the, that they shall deceive the very elect, those who are born again. Behold, I have told you before, verse 26, wherefore if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. 
In other words, don't go where people say, I just, now I give you a perfect day. Everybody remember they used to see the Mary Magdalene side, I mean, um, the mother, uh, Madonna side, Jesus' mother, all right? I'm getting on the Catholics a little bit. But they would, you know, kids would see uh, Mary <laughs> hanging up there, and they said, we saw Mary. Or they would see a side member in New Jersey back when they saw something bleeding. And they said that was a sign. See, the devil was sitting all the things. People began to rush over to New Jersey and worship this little statue that was bleeding. He's like, y'all gotta be careful with stuff like this. The devil was sitting those kind of things. Verse 27. Here's what you need to pay attention to. For as the lightning coming out of the where? East. And shining even unto the what? West. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What does that mean? He's coming back from the east. He's coming back from the east. God sits in the north, but when Jesus said, I'm going to return, I'm coming from the east. Why? To prove to everyone that he is the Messiah. Amen. Amen. So he didn't say, look up like that. He said, hey, watch. Keep looking this way. Because that's the way I'm coming back. Because half the world is praying that way. <laughs> and he's going to let them know they've been praying in the wrong direction. Amen. Amen. All right, Lord. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 8. I got to prove it to you. I got to prove it. Ezekiel chapter 8. I got to prove it to you. Help me, Lord. Don't you know Israel used to do the same thing? Let me make sure I'm going where I'm going with this hand in my notes. Start at verse 14. Ezekiel 8, verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house. There we go. He brought me to the door of the church. Now, this is a good scripture that if you want to witness to people who are involved in Islam, this will be a good scripture to use. Amen? Are you ready? All right. Then he, besought, then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat a woman weeping in Tomas. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see a greater abomination than these. Oh, here we go. We're getting it deep. Verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty-five men. With their backs toward the temple of the Lord. And their faces toward where? East. And their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the what? The sun toward the half moon star and sun. Y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? Yes. They're praying which direction? And these were men of Jerusalem who were doing this at this time. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Has thou said, O son of man, is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they had committed here? They committed an abomination by doing that. For they have filled the land with what? Violence. What's happening today? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They filled the land with violence and have re returned to provoke me to what? Anger. Mm -hmm. And look, they put their branch to the nose. In other words, they are rejecting me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Therefore, will I also deal in fury? My eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. Mm -hmm. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not what? Hear them. So he's not hearing them. Go back to Matthew 24 again. Go back to Matthew 24 again. And read verse 27 again. Now y'all just saw these people were praying eastward. And these were people who were part of Judaism at one time. They switched up. Begin to pray that direction. And God said this is an abomination. Amen. Because this is what's going to happen. For verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That's your sign. Right. Amen. Amen. That's your sign. That's your signal to get more faith. But what's going to happen is once he show up, most folk are going to be try, trying to cry then. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late then. See, once they see that time, they're going to be like, oh, Jesus, now we know. No. Nah, nah, mm -mm. Sorry. Done. Done did. Amen. Satan has deceived you. Let's get some more deceits concerning signs of warning. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So y'all recognize that the devil can send signs of one to right? Amen. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It looks like it might be a short one tonight. Why I'm leaving all this up to the Christmas service, basically because when I come in for the Christmas service, I, again, I told you, I'm not about holidays. Holidays ain't nothing but another day. You know, my birthday is Tuesday. I just turned 53. To me, it's nothing but another day. I thank those who celebrated with me. God bless you. But to be honest, that's the time that I like to get into a place of peace. You know, I've never had good good things with holidays. Holidays, how many of you, you know, some of you may even get depressed on holidays. Don't you know the highest suicide rate is on holidays? Mm -hmm. So guess what I had to learn to do? Find a place for me that I can start thinking. Amen? Amen? You know, it's great to be around family. It's great to do those things. I don't try to bring people into my place of that. But I know, even when I did uh, spend those holidays out with family years ago, I would still wind up sitting in some basement somewhere or going somewhere off to be by myself. You know, or the adults will be somewhere and I'll be somewhere with the kids playing around or playing on something, a computer or something. But I would never, ever feel the fullness of a holiday as we call it. Amen? Amen. And then when I began to learn the lies and, and, and all that and the paganism surrounding holidays, I really didn't like it. Because I realized, you know, and I'm not going to say a bunch of things. I know it's the kids in there. I don't want to spoil it. I remember I said that once before. And I've said the kids a little bit. But, you know, we need to tell them the truth. <laughs> we need to tell them the truth. Amen? But 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. My wife gets upset with me over that. Because she was raised, you know, she has siblings. I'm an only child. I didn't have all that. Amen? I don't want to spoil nobody else's holiday. It's funny that me and Pastor agree on that stuff. You know, because he ain't about holidays either. But I ain't about sports. I ain't about a whole lot of things. But it's okay. Whatever makes you happy. The thing is, don't let a holiday depress you. Amen. Don't let your birthday depress you. Amen. It ain't all that. It's nothing but another day. Go ahead. Especially as we get older. It might have been something when we were kids, but as we got older, it became depressing if we could meet that holiday time for our own children. Because the world said we had to have X amount of dollars to put it underneath that Christmas tree to make our kids feel happy. Mm -hmm. But they wrote some letters to some guy who said they wanted this and they're going to be good all year long. And then if we didn't have the money to provide it for them, they thought they were bad. Hello. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I get it? Did I do something bad? I made sure I didn't, didn't, didn't do bad in front of, you know. Mm -hmm. Down and ain't there. Well, he must have lied to me. Why he lied to me? Because that's what used to be my crap. Mm -hmm. I might as well act like a fool the rest of the year. Mm. <laughs> Amen. 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 Ain't no need to be doing that for him. He ain't show up. Amen. And I sure did act like a fool too. <laughs> Whatever. I sure did. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And we're going to go all the way to verse 10. Now, we beseech you, brother, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you be not so shaken in your mind. Don't be shaken in your mind. Don't be shaken about any belief that God has given you. Amen? Or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at what? Hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Do y'all see that? They go one sign to you. There's one signal to you. When Christians start running to something else, you ought to start wondering, Jesus is on his way. Don't we see that happening today? Amen. Christians are running to everything but Christ. That's why I'm only focused on souls. They're running to prosperity now. They're running to all this other crap. They have divisions amongst denominations. All this stuff is signs of his return. Amen. Let's come a falling way first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who's the man of sin and the son of perdition? Anybody know? The devil. Exactly. Verse 4. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See? He's trying to be an antichrist. He wants to be God. Keep reading. Verse 5. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time. For the mystery of the iniquity do have already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 
In other words, we got to have given it in the devil first. And then shall the wicked, you see that's capitalized, you might pay attention to that? Yeah, that word, the wicked, it means who? The devil, again. And so shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Here's the sword of the spirit. He's going to reveal what? Remember we talked about the sword of the spirit before? And then it comes out of your mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of who? Satan. With all power and signs of what's the other word? Lying wonders. Lying wonders. Amen. <laughs> Y'all got it. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of righteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of truth, that they might be what? Saved. You gotta receive the love of truth that you might be saved. Now, in closing, we're gonna look at this final verse, and we probably want to hear it. Because I just want y'all to get it. We're going through the prayer of the Christmas and all this stuff. But here it is, the greatest Christmas story ever told. And most people have even been deceived about Christmas. Amen? But if you really want to understand the Christmas story, you need to read the book of Luke. Because he is the most detailed book on Jesus. And he never walked with Jesus, he walked with Paul. But he was a doctor and a lawyer. But he wrote the most detailed story about Christmas. Everybody been told that there were three wise men, right? And three shepherds. Now, they was never called wise men. They were called magots, meaning, meaning astrologers, OK? And there were thousands of them. It wasn't three. Then, when Herod told them, go worship them, because they took them, they followed that star for two years. The only ones that saw Jesus at the manger on the day of his birth were the three shepherds when the angel talked to them. But the mad guys, or what we refer to as the three wise men, there were thousands of them. And they traveled for two years following that star. So that meant Jesus had to be how old by the time they reached him? At least two. That's why Herod said go kill all the firstborn from the ages of one to two. Hello. Okay. So that whole thing. Read the story. Read the story. So Jesus had to at least be about two years old before these wise men, as we call them, got there. Did that just change your Christmas story? Yes. Just open your eyes. Well, let's go to Luke. Chapter 2. Now you see why I don't worship things like that. But once you come to the knowledge of the truth, you have the responsibility for it. Amen? It's nothing wrong with buying gifts. It's nothing wrong with treating your, you know, uh, the Christmas tree and all that. that come out of it. It's nothing wrong. But they scrap it in truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't even born December 25th. Mm -hmm. Amen? Nobody knows. Most people say it was around March, February, March or something. So there you go. Amen? I'm sorry, kids. i got to tell the truth. <laughs> but anyway, now if you were to read the full story of Luke, you would get the whole detail on Christmas and what it represents. Now, let's start at verse 1 on chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar, Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own what? City. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. See, that proves to you right there that Joseph had to be of the house and lineage of David, and so did his mother Mary. Amen. Read the book of Matthew to get that full story. Because Matthew is about Jesus being king. All right. Okay, and they break it down. So and so we got so and so we got so and so and we got so and so. Amen. All right, verse five. So they came out of the nation of David to be taxed with Mary, his spouse's wife, being great with child. And so it was that while there were while while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him with a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And look, the angel of the Lord came unto them. You don't see nothing about the wise men, do you? No. Amen. It says shepherds. Amen. Amen. Came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore for afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, 